What's going on guys? I want to say thank you to the people who bought training and thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And shout out to the Nerd Tribe. We need to have a conversation. There's a number of YouTubers who put out the elites are keeping you poor or they want to keep you poor. There's a number of big YouTubers who use that verbiage. And I've actually seen some comments talking about it's a plan to keep you poor, that the elites, the rich people, the billionaires are taking advantage of you. This is why you struggle. Let's have a very real conversation. Um, if you're consuming that type of content, you are tremendously display, uh, delaying your success. Because I've seen it. This, this type of content does very well. And I understand why it does well. Here's the simple truth. In 2022, it is possible for the average person with the information on the internet, with the available resources, it is more than possible for the average person without a college degree to make six figures. Why doesn't the average person make six figures? The truth is painful. Two reasons, your habits and your behaviors. I was the product of a single mother. I grew up in a poor working class neighborhood in Alabama. There is nothing remarkable. There was nothing distinguished about my upbringing. And I've managed to transition from being a regular person working a regular job to being very financially successful. How did I get there when, quote, the elites, the billionaires, they're, they have an evil plan. They get together once a year. They have this convention and they start laughing. They're diabolical laughs. <laughs> How can we keep them poor? It's simply not true. I guarantee you that Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos right now are not thinking about you or keeping you poor. They're not thinking about you at all. Jeff Bezos is probably laying up with Lauren Sanchez. So why isn't the average person better off financially and I stand by my statement based upon everything that's available on the internet available to the resources that the average person without a degree could be making six figures six figures so the question is why aren't these people making six figures because it's possible you cannot convince me otherwise Two reasons, habits and behaviors. And this is the painful truth. And we can examine the PPP loan fraud. What did these people who stole this money from the government do? They bought exotic cars. They bought jewelry. They took vacations. They got plastic surgery. Some people bought homes. Did any of these people invest in the stock market? Did any of these people use this money for crypto? Literally, everyone that gets caught and they go through the list, they were just spending money. There was, and see, that's a sign 
that if you actually get some money and the first thing you do is go off and satisfy the thirst, that's what I call it, the thirst for the good life. You want to have the car, you want to have the house, you want to have the clothes, you want to have the jewelry. Um, that is a sign that you do not have the mental attributes to be wealthy because you cannot forego like currently I have a Porsche and I saw this Porsche in 2017 and I did not buy that Porsche in 2020 because what I did is I sat down and I created a goal to make more money to get what I wanted the average person doesn't operate like that this is why repossessions 6,000 repossessions per day are happening this is why people are behind on their credit cards see being born in the United States is a blessing and it's a curse because you can coast literally coast your whole life you don't have to do anything extraordinary you don't have to do anything remarkable and if you just make a few good decisions, get the job, keep it, stay out of debt, you can have a pretty good life. Just coasting. Being you know, so we, we have so much here in the United States of America. I mean, our poorest people by international standards are wealthy. You've got people in these other countries who are looking for clean drinking water. When's the last time you had to go foraging for clean drinking water in the United States of America? So, you know, shout out to the people in Flint, Michigan. So what I'm trying to do is reprogram you because I understand why this content works. The elites are trying to keep you poor. Who wants to take 100 full responsibility for their lot in life? It is easier to digest that the reason that I am poor is that this billionaire over here and his billionaire friends are conspiring to keep me poor. They're using me. It's a it's, it's a system right out the matrix. I'm a battery for the elites. They're using my labor. They're using they're keeping me poor to use me. That's a very good narrative. That is 100% false. It's not true. But many, many people buy into this narrative because how many people want to sit down and take 100% accountability of their life? How many people want to, like, all right, the reason that my life is the way that it is today. It's because of the decisions that I have made. Very few people do that. Very few people do that. Very few people want to do. It's painful. It's painful to realize that you're living in your car is because you have made some bad decisions. It's painful. No one wants to look in the mirror. And I speak from experience. I was homeless. And I was living in a boarding house. And for 15 months, I was angry. I was mad at my ex-wife. I was just like, and I was blaming all of these factors that the reason that I ended up homeless was because my ex-wife was crazy. The people on the job, they didn't respect me. I had all of these narratives that were running through my mind. And I thought about it and I blamed people. And like I said, I was very, 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 very angry. Then one morning it was raining and I was in the bathroom and I was shaving. And I had that look. I looked in the mirror and I realized I did not like the person who was staring back at me. I couldn't stand it. And at that moment, I had a moment of clarity the reason that i was living in that boarding house was because i didn't save any money i did not prepare not to live in that boarding house and as oprah would say it was an aha moment and it was just like 
so many things became very very clear in that moment of clarity and I was just disgusted I finished shaving I went back to my room and I laid down and I stared at the ceiling and I started to really understand that why I was in such a bad decision number one I never until that until later I never saved money never saved money the closest I had to a savings plan back then was when I was in the military and I bought US savings bonds and that's how I ended up getting my first car because I had say I bought those bonds first sergeant branch shout out to first sergeant branch who told us to get these bonds and I, I was like he, he looks good he looks smart I, I listened to him and I started buying bonds and when I came I was able to buy my first car without a cosigner because I had like a three thousand dollar down payment and three thousand dollars in 1988 was like 10 fifteen thousand today so I had you know I put down 30 percent of what the car was retailing for and I was laying on that bed and I also had recently list, started listening to Earl Nightingale and uh, I was laying in that bed and I, I got really angry but for the first time my anger was properly directed the anger was at myself I was pissed at myself I was mad I was disappointed I was just like, man, how did you let this happen? How did you let this happen? And at that moment, I got up and I wrote down some goals. And I said, from this moment on, I'm going to take full accountability for me. One of the best decisions I've ever made. Because I started to come up with a plan and I went out. And got me a part-time job and I saved every penny from that part-time job never put it in part of my income or my uh, monthly expenditures I did not adjust my monthly spending pattern and that was the first time other than when I was buying US savings bonds I had a savings account and I saved up close to four thousand dollars and when I got let go from T-Mobile, that savings account saved me. I was able to move out of the boarding house, um, get the job at rent a crate. Because I don't think I ever told you, I had moved out of the boarding house. Going back to shout out to Black Planet, the woman I met on Black Planet. Uh, rented me her house and what I did is I went ahead and got some roommates and I rented up the front so I was living kind of I was house hacking you know before house hacking became a thing and um, I was in that house when I got the call from rental crate and then I had to go down Cleveland Avenue to the phone booth to call them back using Mr. Patel the Indian voice and this attitude of high level of personal accountability um, really served me well because when I became a salesperson and I would go back and I would ask people, what did I do wrong? Very humbly. And they told me what I did wrong and that made me a better salesperson. Made me a much sell, but much, much better salesperson. Because this is the thing. When something in my life isn't going the way that I want it to, I look inward, not outward. I don't start blaming people. It's like, what am I doing wrong? Like right now, I got a little situation. Um, I'm doing research on starting another business. I've spent money hiring consultants. And I've decided not to go forward with that business because I've done my research. Because once again, at the end of the day, like car rental business, why did that become the cluster? 
I actually made a bad decision. I didn't do my homework. I tried to do my homework. That that's because one of the things, and this this is one of the reasons that this time when I did my research, I did not go to YouTube University. A YouTube university is very unreliable for getting true and accurate data. So I found someone in the industry and I hired them and I got the data that I needed so I could make an educated decision. But once again, did you ever hear me blame anyone else for the car rental business? I, I made that decision. It went bad because, number one, it was really hard to get the research that I wanted so I decided, I made the decision <laughs> to buy some data. I knew what I was, I knew, I knew exactly what I was doing going in. So I bought cars, put them on the platform, and I started to get feedback. And I knew within about six months I wasn't gonna stay in that business because I was like, it was just a horrible, terrible business. And that's why I was able to come here on YouTube and tell you guys the truth. Because I was like, mm -mm, I am, I'm not staying in this. But once again, I took personal accountability. See, it's very easy to believe this narrative that the reason that you're poor, the reason that you're struggling is the elites want to keep you poor. Now, if you are in South America living in the jungle and you have these guerrilla fighters who are refusing to allow uh, to have an economy established okay yeah the gorillas are keeping you poor because they refuse to let an economy yeah that makes sense but here in the united states of america everyone who has a phone has access to the internet everyone it's ubiquitous and the reason that people are poor number one it's an absolute refusal to take personal accountability the manosphere it is a whole niche on YouTube of men who absolutely refuse to take personal responsibility well these women are crazy do you understand 6200 people per day get married in the United States of America. 2.3 million people get married. If you are a halfway decent man and you're struggling to get female companionship, the issue resides with you. Are there crazy women? Yeah, absolutely. Are they all crazy? No, they're not. There are many reasonable, loving, kind women out there. There's a ton of them. But for some reason, you want to sit in a commiseration silo and watch video after video of women making bad decisions um, versus actually taking it upon yourself to learn. The, it's a skill set. It's a skill set to learn how to get women. It's a skill set. And the absolute refusal to learn what you need to do as a man to be able to get the woman you want rests with you. Once again, I am 56 years old. I can get women in their 20s and 30s all day long. Never mention money. Just talk to them. But once again, it's this absolute refusal to look at the man in the mirror and place blame where it should be placed. It's an absolute refusal to understand that the decisions that you made 10 years ago are the reason your life is where it is today. It's much easier to blame a room full of invisible people that actually have no power over your life and I, I'm like, I'm seeing this content, it wins, it wins. Like this video probably won't do that well because I'm bringing you the truth. If you want to make six figures, you don't have to, you don't have to be poor in the United States of America. If you grew up poor because your parents were poor, that's on your parents. 
If you're 30 years old in these United States of America and you're poor, that's on you. That's on you. And it's on the way you live your life and the decisions you make. And I, I keep seeing this trope the elites they want to keep you poor they want to keep you poor and i understand why the content creators are creating this content because people are consuming this content because i'm getting ready to start a new movement i'm getting ready to rework my content because i want you to be wealthy happy enjoy life and i don't think that you're going to get there with these YouTube lies. I don't think you're going to get there at all. So I'm getting ready to re just redo everything. I'm getting ready to uh, get on the band to create my corporate citizens. The people who want to be successful. Because once again, I will stand by this with the information that is available here on the Internet. And on Facebook groups and the networking, you don't even have to spend money to learn how to make six figures today. There are blogs, there are podcasts, there is so much information out here. But here's the problem. The information is free. And I'm like, what? 99% of people do not appreciate free information and I'm going to make a parallel here you meet a girl in the bar she's drunk you drunk you go home you smash you would never ever consider her for a long term relationship because you got that pussy for free it's like, well, she does that for everyone. You would actually have more respect, more reverence for a woman that didn't give you any and made you date her. See, once again, that, that like free is just not respected. Ladies, I'm about to say something. If you want to be in a relationship with a man, Number one, you need to be interesting. That's a whole nother video. But number two, you don't need to be easy with letting him jump in that pussy. Because the average man does not respect free. It's facts. Look at your examples. Look at what happens. And that parallel, because you're getting the best of that woman. You're getting the goods. And you do not even take her serious because she allowed you to roll up in there and pump and dump her. And you literally go ahead, and put in the comments. How many of you respect women that you can go home and smash the first night with little resistance? You don't respect free. That shows you there's numerous videos on YouTube talking about, hey, a chick that lets you hit that like that. Don't take her serious. Number, number of videos So Because it's free Because literally It's laying everywhere This information is everywhere It's on podcasts It's on blogs It's on websites But another issue is You have got to actually Study the information Then apply the information you got to study it, then apply it. And once you get to the point where you understand, like me, in 2019, I had a heart attack. Why did I have a heart attack? I was eating bad. There was nothing evil. There was no karma. I actually had behaviors that contributed to my heart attack. Behaviors that I have such mismodified and I take my medication every day because I know what hap can happen to me if I miss my medication and if I lose the perspective of being on my medication. Once again, it was my fault. It's no one else's fault. No one else did that to me. It was my fault. 
And when you get to the level where you take this extreme personal accountability, your life will literally transform. Instead of sitting here consuming, well, they're trying to keep you poor. The elites are keeping you poor. I want you to do this test. I want you to sit down and take out a pen and a paper and write down the reasons that you think you're poor. And be honest. Some of you are gonna put, I didn't go to college. Some of you are gonna write, I had children without being married. If you sit down and you're a hundred percent honest with yourself, you will outline, cause see, here's the thing. You know why you're poor. You may not know it on a conscious If someone asked you, why are you poor? You, but you deep down know why you're poor. You deep down already know. And by acknowledging this and taking responsibility, you are 50% of the way to success. Because there are people who will literally go to their graves and never acknowledge their role and the reason. Like right now, there is someone in a nursing home, 70, 80, 90 years old. No one comes to visit them. And they're very, very sad about the fact but let's go back 50 years in the past. This person wasn't a good father or this person wasn't a good mother. See, I have seen the results of parents who kids love them. I have seen parents 60, 70, 80 years old and their children are there to help them because they had a good relationship. They had a good relationship. One of the things that, you know, many people expect folks to act out of a certain family loyalty. It's like, I'm your dad. You should do X. It don't work like that. If you are a good father or a good mother to your children, when you're old, they will be there. If you're a terrible father a terrible mother to your children, they ain't coming to visit you because they don't like you. That was some hard truth. That was some of that hard, that was some of that strong cocaine. If you are not in a relationship, it's because you're not relationship worthy. Now, what does that mean? One of the things, one of my ex-girlfriend said you know I can always count on you if you say you're gonna show up you actually show up that right there the simple ability to be consistent goes a long way goes a long way the ability to actually make another person feel special and cared for through your actions if you are Alone is because of you. It's not because, once again, are there crazy men out there? Yeah. Are there crazy women out there? Yeah. Everybody ain't crazy. And I'm going to tell you something. If that's all you seem to draw, that's your energy. If you're just drawing bad relationship after bad relationship, There's something in you that's drawing that to you. Facts. Facts. So, if you want to be wealthy in America, and I'm going to lay it out. I believe everyone can get to six figures based upon the internet and the things we have available and the resources. That's $100,000 a year. Single person income. I think everyone can get there. As a married couple, you make 100K, your wife makes 100K, you're a $200,000 a year couple. You do a few little tweaks, you can get to 250. I feel that is well within the reason of the average person. Um, is the average person going to make $3 million in a year? No, it's not happening. You have to do a lot of stuff to make three million in a year. The reason I made three million in one year 
is because of the decisions that I made in 2000. Starting that storage auction business. That's the reason that I made many, because once again, the decisions that you make 10 years before today are the reason that you have what you have in your life today. So decisions that I made 20 years ago are the reason I'm in the spot that I'm in today. See, you got to understand you are 100% in control of your life. This is not to discount like you could be driving and someone wrecks your car and someone that happens. Accidents happen. But for the most part, you're 100% in control of your life. You are um, definitely capable and once again, this isn't about intelligence or doing something extremely um, smart or like how many times have you driven down the street and saw a Burger King on this corner, a McDonald's on this corner, a Wendy's on this corner and a Captain D's on that corner. And they all open and making money and they right across the street from each other. So this whole thing like, well, there's too much competition. Not really. See, the number of people who will take action and facilitate change, it's not that many. It's not that many. You start a business, if you're willing to go through the gauntlet, as I call it, this process of you learning the business, which is going to be hard, you stick with it. You could be a millionaire in six years. Once again, the elites and all this talk of the elites, the 1%. Now, with the stock market, I do believe the stock market is manipulated. Right now, the stock market is not being manipulated. Nope. Real market forces, real marketplace forces have entered the stock market. And you're seeing the reality of these companies with reduced revenues. At the moment, the stock market isn't being manipulated at all. And there's um, one gentleman who put out some content. There's going to be a rally because the 1% want to sell off and extract a profit. Once again, um, I'm just not with that. The reason that your life is messed up is because of what someone else did to you. I'm not with that noise. I don't believe that. I don't own that. I understand that if I want oral sex every day, I got to be a certain kind of goo to get that. And one of the things that people don't seem to understand nor appreciate is the power of the law of action. Everyone's all on the law of attraction. Just sit back, do nothing, and beautiful things are going to happen. The law of action is the more data points, the more action points you take in the life, the more successful you'll be. See, the average person doesn't take enough swings at bat. Like last night, I had a feeling that LSU was going to beat Alabama. And I feel that Nick Saban's dynasty is coming to an end because everyone, you know, Nick Saban made everyone get more competitive. And even if Nick Saban doesn't win another national championship, he's going to go down as one of the greatest coaches to ever coach the game. Because he's done a lot. He's come up with a, a formula. He's come up with a process. And, the, and his coaching staff has literally been a, a musical chairs. Every time he gets someone that's good, two, three years, they're gone. And with Nick Saban and the process, and that this is a good example. Um, 
one of the things that you have to understand and Nick Saban's run was 16 years he came to Alabama in 2008 so yeah not 16 yeah 2014 years good run very good run the average person can have a similar run if they would take action forget the law of attraction and start adopting the law of action and you start doing more and building more and creating more things are going to be much more positive like I know this is going to piss off the passport bros, but I feel it is an extremely hilarious that you have grown men who are hopping on planes to get female companionship because they cannot compete in the United States of America. At the moment, it is so easy to get a woman. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But once again, that's a whole nother video. But once again, stop with this. The elites are trying to keep you poor stuff Just stop. The reason that you are poor is you. Your habits and your behaviors and the decisions that you made. That's the reason. No other reason. You think Jeff Bezos has more hours in the day than you do? Bill Gates, Elon Musk, they only have 24 hours. They don't have any more time than you do, but why have they done more? Because they have taken more swings at bat. Elon Musk has had nervous breakdowns. He's worked so hard. So once again, like I said, I'm getting ready to revamp the training to bring a lot of winners into the winner circle because this whole notion that they're trying to keep you poor is a 100% escape from accountability. And once again, I don't, I don't really expect this video to do that well because this is that strong cocaine. This is that strong cocaine because uh, like I said, I have videos on my other two channels, the corporate game and B-School for Hustlers and these are good videos and they're not getting the views not because the information is bad it's because people are looking for simple easy error effort free effortless solutions to complicated problems it ain't gonna happen it's just not gonna happen so if you are willing to step into the winner's circle and become 100% accountable for your life. If you just make that decision today, you're 50% of the way to that life you want. Living where you want, driving what you want, dating who you want. It's all about you making the effort.